Tom, you and I go back a long time in the video industry. I doubt that there's much that we haven't seen or been exposed to. Um, one of the things that never ceases to amaze me is the improvements in camera performance over all those years. Um, we, we both go back to the RCA days and we could probably rattle off really old part numbers most people wouldn't understand, but those part numbers kind of stick out in our mind because of the performance mm -hmm. of those cameras, especially in comparison to a lot of the other product in the market and on the in, yep. in the industry. This product is new to the market. A couple of years of, of uh, engineering going into it. We started talking about this with some customers a couple of years ago with some sneak previews and, and some uh, intelligence gathering, some feature set stuff we did with end users and the camera product or, um, camera product managers. Um, this product is called the Bosch 7100i Dinian Bullet Camera. Mm -hmm. And we spent a significant amount of time last week with this. And I think most of that time was we were standing around with our mouths open looking at this thing, shaking our head like, how does it get any better and, and what does it do and, and how does it work from there? Why don't you give me some uh, information sure. on this camera? Yep, so it, it is a bullet camera, needless to say. Um, and again, we're, we're finding out the bullet cameras bes between having the flat glass in the front, uh, better performance for higher resolution cameras, but also with the IR, uh, it capabilities are much longer throw. So the 7100 IIR bullet comes in a 1080 uh, 2 megapixel, a 4 megapixel, and a 4K 8 megapixel versions. Um, so you get your different resolutions, needless to say, then you can get different lens options. Now they're all very focal, but there's a standard, and then there's also a telephoto option. And uh, I, I know a lot of people go, well, why do you have these options? They drive us crazy sometimes. Well, you know, resolution, you need that, you know, depending on what's the application, but also the application for that lens. You know, I need to get more detail. I need to get a longer throw. But, you know, we're finding out now, especially, you know, LPRs and, you know, long range perimeter, um, you know, with the analytics, we need more of that. So um, what were some of the things that we found out with, the, you know, the telephoto and the intelligent IR over the last couple of days? So there is uh, an option that adds to the list of those things. It's called the X version options. <laughs> and that adds um, some, some also some great capabilities within mm -hmm. this. Uh, when you do compare the X version of the camera to the non-X version, the X version brings to the table just incredible HDR capability. HDR is high dynamic range. Mm -hmm. Those really tough lighting environments where it's bright in one area and dark in another, or there's varying change based on object moving and, and the lighting in the scene. The other thing they bring to the table is, is extreme low light <laughs> capability. Okay. Um, again, standing around looking at this thing, and what we were trying to do with it last week in some of the testing videos that you'll see in the um, information we'll provide, it's just it's just incredible yeah. what this camera is capable of yeah. doing. And even up into the 4K version. Mm -hmm. Up until now, 4K tends to require more light, and it's, it's similar here, but in this 4K version of this camera, in that X version, Again, it just blew my mind to see what the camera was yeah. capable of. So last week we um, took this camera out and we put it on, you know, kind of our, our second test range that we've <laughs> that we use a lot. It was a kind of we'll call it a farm environment where there's mm -hmm. not a lot of uh, spillover light and things like yep. that. It's just a big field. We're able to set uh, range markers out mm -hmm. to about uh, 1,100 feet. Yeah, um, it's a flat area. Um, again, there's some wooded area there as well, but we do a lot of testing with that. We were able to do daylight, evening, afternoon, as well as you know, well into the night in complete darkness, mm -hmm. again with little to no spillover light, right. um, and little to no light from, from the moon or the stars. So, yep. yeah. great environment, um, and again, the videos that we shot, those will be available uh, with this article below in the, yeah. in the post. Um, take a look at those, because again, completely, yeah. it, it's, it's one thing to see the videos and not really understand what the environment was like yeah. firsthand, right? And we always struggle to provide some sort of ability to say, this is what we saw with your eye, but we can't do that with the cameras. It's yeah. always a struggle. Yep. 
it was so impressive. We tried a bunch of things last week different than we've done before. Still couldn't come up with a way to show, you know, how dark it was yep. other than, again, to try and use an iPhone or, or a telephone for, for what people are used to seeing. What I thought one of the funnier things is we're in, in a command center pretty much, monitors looking at it. The person going out there walking around, they literally couldn't see. Talking to them, it's <laughs> funny, talking to them on the telephone. There, you could tell that they were worried about where the range markers were, and we're saying that the range markers ahead, ahead of you are on the right probably about 10 feet, 12 feet, yeah. and then they would chime in as they got closer yeah. to it and say, I got it. And it yep. was kind of, it's kind of funny to do that, but I mean, it was impressive um, to, to be able to do that and sitting in that yeah. building yeah. and doing what we were doing is, was uh, pretty interesting. As you said too, you know, we're, we're old timers in this industry and you know, the technology it's built into this camera, take away the IR and everything like that, but what we needed 25, 30 years ago to even come close to something like this was called a what? Well, there were, well, it depends on how, <laughs> how long ago. It was either a, a sit or an I sit back in the exactly. tube days, and then we had um, ICCD and I squared CCDs yes. when we started getting into the, the solid state <laughs> imagers. And how expensive were those? Um, <laughs> it, it was nice to be a sales guy when you were selling a, you know, a truck full of those. That, that was for sure. And again, this is a, I don't want to call it an everyday camera, but it is an everyday camera. Yeah. It, it is, you know, priced accordingly. Um, in terms of, yep. of its performance and its capabilities, but yeah. impressive, again, the difference in what those cameras were capable of, and then when you yeah. see something like this that's out of the box, capable of doing yeah. so much more, yeah. and the performance level and the low light and the HDR and those challenging light situations, incredible. E even to the point with this camera, I'm gonna probably say in 95% of the applications, in a parking lot environment, uh, around a building, unless you're in a complete dark environment, these IRs will probably never even kick in because, you know, it, th this will create a enough usable video without the IRs. Um, again, it, it's amazing to have watched technology improve yeah. over the years and to see the difference in this camera yes. and what it is capable of doing in such a wide variety and such mm -hmm. a wide range of, of lighting um, situations. It just, uh, as you were saying, we were almost at just trying to force the camera to go into black and white. Yeah. And until there was just absolutely positively no light. And in some cases, we simply forced the camera yeah. into black and white to start to test things like the IR yeah. and some of the other capabilities. So um, again, just an impressive camera. What other kind of features does a camera sure. have? So talking about you know the low light and the IR, so the units come standard with uh, 850 nanometer IR illumination. So if you buy the standard unit, meaning you know standard lens option, you know it has a 80 meter, um, uh, 850 nanometer IR range. Now 80 meters, it's 262 feet. And I got to <laughs> tell you, from what we saw last week, I would have to argue with that in terms of how far actually that that goes out into that field of view right right i mean i'm and when i'm saying argue i it went a lot further than yeah what you're saying in yep. terms of some of the testing yeah. we saw out of it now if you go with the telephoto now that's the two and the four megapixel standard 80 meter meters 262 feet the tele uh, telephoto version with a little bit longer lens now the IRs are out to 140 meters, which is 459 feet. And again, argu <laughs> arguably, I would tell you, you know, based on what we were yeah. seeing last week, and we were well beyond that. And again, I want to talk about that IR yep. just a little bit, sure. because these di these distances that are quoted on data sheets mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they're um, sometimes, you know, they're, they're based on what is the test what was in the test range and things like that right in our environment we were literally out in the middle of a field yeah. we were you know no green brown grass yeah. very little reflectance there were no trees or buildings around you know in the field of view so there was good reflectance off of the ground yeah. material meaning green gray right, right. green right. gray brown for right. the grass at, at the time of the year when we did this in in uh, february and march mm -hmm. but there was no bright shininess or anything like that there was no white or stone or no anything no. so in our experience with it going further it could even go that much further Correct. given 
better reflectance yep. for the yep. for that light to use yeah. to fact, get I, out further. If I remember right, it was a little bit of an overcast night, so I don't remember seeing stars. Yeah, there or were any no stars, moon. <laughs> no moon, no nothing in terms of of any sort of backlighting yeah. or anything like that. Yep. Yeah. So. The 850 nanometer comes standard, again, depending on which lens combination you get, your distances. But this one, this camera specifically now is the first one in the Bosch line. You can also go into an optional 940 nanometer IR illuminator. Now, the gotcha with that is typically when you go from 850 to 940, you drop half your distance in distancing, but what's the advantage to the 940? So the 940 is beyond the range that your human eye can see. Um, 850, you, you know, if you know what you're looking for and you're used to seeing it, you're gonna see that dull pink red glow if you know where the camera is and if you can spot it. With the yep. 940, you can go out there and you're, you're gonna really have a hard time seeing it unless you've got some sort of a camera or another device that's able to see in that range yep. of infrared. So yep. it filters out even more of that, call it human visible light. Yeah. And um, basically it's... Yeah. It, again, if, you, if a customer comes to you and says, hey, I need a covert you know, uh, application, I can't see IR and it's gonna be super you know, low light level, that's where you're probably gonna look at the 940 nanometer, but just know you're gonna reduce the IR distance from the 850 to 940, roughly about half. Does shorten it up. Yep. Now, there is an option that's coming out, it's not available yet, for white light uh, LED. Now, we haven't gotten any testing on that or any you know preliminary information, but what's the application you're gonna use that for? One of our other key products, the MIC portfolio, has the same option. Yeah where you have a, um, the ability to swap white light out for infrared mm -hmm. there as, as well. Um, that's a little different, but in, yep. in the case of where we see that getting used. Um, obviously, if you're trying to be discreet, the invisible IR light or near invisible IR light doesn't light the scene up like a, you know, right. like <laughs> it's Christmas. <laughs> um, but what the white light does is if you've got an area that, you know, is somebody's in where, where you want them to know that you're watching yeah. them, you can turn that white light on and then they'll know that somebody's watching yeah. them. And I think from the perspective of what, how we've used it with the MIC, I think this will, will go with that very well in that yeah. you can obviously see the visible light. So if you're sending an officer out to do some sort of an investigation, mm -hmm. you can get the, the visibility from the, from the camera. You won't have to add additional lighting out light. there or it could supplement what maybe some dim light that you do have out there. Yeah. So I think that's mainly what it would be for, a supplemental light, mm -hmm. as well as kind of awareness for whoever's in the target field of view that's not supposed to be there to know, hey, we've got our eyes on you, right. we're watching you. Yeah. Um, yep. you, you might want to check out. It almost now opens up another question that we have to ask customer is, uh, do you want covert? Again, 940 nanometer, maybe IR. Do you want sort of covert? standard 850 nanometer IR, or do you want somebody to know, like again, maybe that football field at a school district, I want white light. I want everyone to know that we're looking and surveilling that area, so stay away. Great to have options. <laughs> that, you know, again, that's, that's probably the best part about it. Yeah. What other features does this guy have? Sure, so along with that, um, uh, it's CPP 142 it comes with the IVA Pro Buildings and Pro Perimeter. So it has both of those analytic packages already loaded onto it. So what's some of the testing we've done with those? So same thing, we did a lot of testing with a lot of the other cameras and newer cameras that offer the Pro Building Pack. Um, again, put it up on the wall or on a pole, whatever you're doing. It, there's, there's very little, if any, setup to be done. Out of the box, the thing is able to do recognition of people, um, and a lot of capabilities for vehicles and things like that. Yep. Um, again, very again, very well improved over what we've seen in the past for the Highline uh, portfolio of cameras. Just again, impressive, you have to kind of see it with your own yeah. eyes, but yep. great in terms of basic things I call, like identifying a human, mm -hmm. maintaining a human in the field of view, the recognition, tracking capabilities of yep. humans and vehicles, and things like that, and you get all the other IG, IVA functionality yeah. that comes with the camera as well. Yep. And I tell you what, one of the things I've, I guess I, we've glossed over, you know, we talked about the 1080, two megapixel, the four megapixel version, telephoto standard, different IRs and that. We even forgot the big brother, 
the 4K and the 8 megapixel version of this unit? Um, again, the 1080p is, I would say, again, you could argue, and I know there's going to be people who are going to say different. I still think the 1080p is capable of working in the least amount of light, yeah. given all other things are equal. 4K still struggles a little bit to, to maintain its you know capability in the low light, but as I mentioned before, uh, we were blown away. Yeah. I mean, all of us sat around that room and, and we're running out, looking out in the field of view, saying, I can't believe we can see that. And it's a 4K camera. So right. the, the resolution, the detail, the crispness, everything about it, about it was incredible. And the capability of it to maintain its color picture yeah. into that low light environment yeah. was just impressive beyond thought. And then we get back to that four megapixel for that X version, mm -hmm. especially. That is uh, a super performer when you yeah. need more than 1080p, but mm -hmm. um, you, you know 4K is not going to do the job for you. Right. But its capability, again, incredible to see the detail capability, mm -hmm. the low light color, and even in the black and white mode, yep. uh, with and without IR, were, were impressive. It, and the 4K, um, you know, eight megapixel. The only really change with that, just so you know, you know, from the two megapixel, four megapixel, those distances. The you know uh, eight megapixel camera in the eight fifty nanometer IR does reduce down to a, a sixty foot in standard eighty. I'm sorry, sixty meter in uh, standard and an eighty meter in telephoto. So you do have to watch if you're going to be in that really super dark environment. What are your distances? But again, very long distance uh, throws with those IRs and has the options of the 940 and the white light when that comes out. Now there's one other bolt on, and I say bolt on option, for these cameras, and that's a polarizing cut filter. So some of the models are available um, with that option, mm -hmm. and that option is, I think, unique because that gives us the capability of doing some things that typically are a real struggle for, for cameras to do. Mm -hmm. One of the big things that it's difficult for people to understand, from a human perspective, your eye works very differently than the camera. The eye can look at different levels of light and mm -hmm. see inside and outside of a window, for example, or, or other things like that. What that polarizing filter does for these cameras is allow you to do some pretty unique things in, in terms of its capability. Um, the polarizing filter, I think the biggest application that I see for it, and there's probably many others, is for looking at who's inside of a vehicle in that yeah. varying light situation. So, yep. especially at nighttime or you know, oddly lit times of the day when the light on the inside and the outside of the mm -hmm. vehicle aren't equal, um, right. you, and you really need to know is there one person, two people, three people in, yeah. in a vehicle, that polarizing filter does give you that capability of kind of being able to tell what both the inside and the outside of the yep. vehicle are like. So there's yeah. probably other applications. I just see that as being oh, one of yeah. the biggest and most important ones for, yeah. for the camera. Yeah. I, and one of the other uh, features uh, this camera has too that I know our 8000 series camera has is it has two SD card slots. Actually two micro SD yeah. card slots. Well, and what, are, what would be a great application for that? Um, we are seeing a lot more people start to move away from I'll call it enterprise or network-based mm -hmm. storage, and they are you know, putting storage built into the camera. That has come a long way because the technology associated with the um, micro and the regular SD mm -hmm. storage cards has, has really kind of taken <laughs> off, and that continuous read-write as well as the number of mm -hmm. read-writes that the devices are capable of. Uh, Joe at the office has done a lot of studying on that when we started with that capability in the in the 8000 he's got a couple of customers mm -hmm. that are starting to take advantage of that and we haven't seen any problems with it so i see more and more i think people will start to take advantage of those onboard mm -hmm. um, storage capability and again you put a couple of meg worth of storage in each camera you get a long time even up in that 4k yeah. range i know he's done a lot more testing with that go speak to it a lot better than yeah. than you and i can but sure. yeah. um, again uh, the capability especially with two cards really kind of enhances what it, what this can do. And when the, the VMS is capable of it, gives you that backup for filling gaps in case yeah. there was a network uh, disconnect or something mm -hmm. like that. So the camera might have the capability, depending on the VMS, of backfilling that gap on the, on the central yep. storage. Yeah, uh, another nice thing with, and again, bullet cameras are typically, you don't hear about 
vandal resistance with them. But these, uh, the, the 5000 and this 7000 series bullet camera by Bosch is IK10 rated for vandal resistance. And I mean, how, how do they do that? Well, I think the unique things about this camera that make it that way, and again, you have to think it's the whole package, right? It's not just the lens or right. not just this piece of it. With this camera, the challenge, I think, to make it have that rating or, or maintain that rating is the, the design of the, I'll call it the knuckle or the elbow. Mm -hmm. um, Bosch, a long time ago, started working on this mm -hmm. and came up with some really unique design. And it's impressive how stable yeah. it is and how once you lock it up, and it's not very difficult to lock up, it doesn't require special tools and really long you know, muscles on, on, on long wrenches <laughs> and things like that. It's very simple and very capable, but very flexible. It, it, and it maintains that rating, which is, yep. I think, very unique yeah. throughout the entire package, not just, oh, my, my lens has the IK10 rating. Right. What about the rest of it, especially yeah. in this configuration? Because somebody can grab it, swing on it, push it, do other mm -hmm. things with it, and then that, that would seem to be the, yeah. the weak point. Yeah. Now, w some of the applications we've been finding a little bit too, and yeah, you touched on it, is you know, this camera, we're starting to utilize this more than just security. We're using it in ITS Smart City. And right away when you start saying, hey, I'm going to put this thing on roadway or bridges, what's the one thing you got to have on a bridge? Well, two things I <laughs> guess will be important. But the, I think the main thing, and even on poles out around perimeters and anything like that, is, is image stabilization. You got it. This thing has impressive image stabilization that has been tuned very well for those environments, for those... Yeah bridge environments and pole environments yep. along the road or even on, on any sort of a perimeter. So the electronic image stabilization is really capable of, of doing some decent things. Yeah. Bosch has got a really good video on that that will tie into yeah. the into the article and the yeah. knowledge base. So yeah. take a look at that to understand how that works and what it does. Yep, and like you say, the other thing is there is a analytic package you know, like for the ITS market. This camera has the capability of, of with just like the Autodome and a couple mm -hmm. of the other Highline, cameras, you can add what's called the IVA Pro, Pro Traffic yep. package. That package is is licensable, Does it, it comes at an additional cost. It is available um, under certain circumstances, you have to be approved to get that, mm -hmm. and, and typically what it does. Adds a lot of features to it, again, oh, yeah. there's a there's a Bosch video that we'll put in, yep. the, in the article that'll talk about all those kind of things and yeah. what those capabilities are. But again, mainly for that ITS traffic environment yeah. as well as applications that are using metadata to do yep. other things other than security type things. Yep. Yeah, I, and I know the last couple things, I know we just keep talking about this camera and the features and the benefits yeah. and things it brings to us. And again, we see a lot of technology and when we get excited about something, <laughs> we like to get excited and tell our customers about it also. This old dog likes new tricks. <laughs> and I'll tell you, this is this is the good stuff right here. Oh yeah, yeah. So one of the other things you know we, we talk about is application, customers, specifications, things like this. But we didn't talk about the poor installer. And the installer for this camera, again, the nice thing is, yeah, it, it's PoE, 12 volt DC, 24 volt AC. But what are some of the other cool little features this thing has? Um, one of the one of the really cool features, and this is something Bosch has maintained mm -hmm. all along, is that you know we're changing our I'll call them almost a universal type yep. mounting platform where we're using these really heavy duty mm -hmm. steel punched and pressed plates that you mount on the on the wall or on whatever you're going to mount first. Has all the holes yeah. in it for all the different kinds of boxes. We've always talked about that. Yep. We've done a lot of videos on that for some of the other cameras, but. Mm -hmm. They, they've done a good job with this and they've really kind of taken this and made it into a, a great option. In the yeah. back box of the camera, in addition to that, <laughs> I'm gonna lay this down. So that back box, you would mount that plate and then this back box basically yep. twists and clicks on. In the back box, there's the capability for contact closure inputs, the, mm -hmm. the different power um, inputs that yep. this camera can take, uh, the, your ethernet RJ45 type plug. This is kind of unique because it yeah. also inclu includes or incorporates a punch down block, and that's mm -hmm. uh, sort of new, I think, for the security industry as we get closer and closer right. to the infrastructure world. Yep. Um, this product has that, and I think that's a, a unique feature. So with all these functions, features, models, and things like that, I know it sounds confusing, but where can they go to and ask for help and ask us for our input? 
Well, as always, um, we're happy to provide demos. We're happy to, again, point you to the videos and the other resources that we have. Um, but you, if you need to get in touch with us, you can contact us at support at midchest.com.